Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to start our exploration of the aldol condensation, which is an extremely important reaction of carbonyls. Since aldol condensation is a fairly large and complex topic, I am going to break it into four parts. We are going to talk about the acidic conditions, we will talk about aldol condensation in basic conditions, we'll have a separate conversation about the mixed aldol condensation, and I will also have a dedicated video with examples and a nifty trick which will allow you to predict the products of the aldol condensation quickly. In this video, we are going to focus on the aldol condensation in purely acidic conditions. Generally speaking, an aldol condensation is a reaction where we are going to take an aldehyde or a ketone, treat that with acid, and initially form a beta hydroxycarbonyl. We are also making a new carbon carbon bond right over here, so this is also an important reaction uh, for the carbon carbon bond formation. And this molecule is commonly referred to as an aldol, hence the name for the reaction. However, this may not be necessarily our final product, it can be just an intermediate. Because if we supply some extra heat, that will cause an elimination reaction, and in this case your new bond right over here is going to be a double bond. And this type of a compound we typically refer to as the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl, or you might also hear a term cation or catene, where the cat is the part of the carbonyl, the ketone over here, and the in is the double bond that we have right next to it. And although catene is the iopac correct name, we typically do not use that term and commonly refer to these compounds and, uh, as alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyls or just alpha-beta unsaturated compounds. Now, let's take a look at the mechanism of this reaction. Since we're working in acidic conditions, the very first thing that's going to be happening here is the protonation of our carbonyl, giving us the following intermediate, which going to lose the proton to whatever conjugate base we have floating around, I will just show water for the simplicity's sake, giving us our enol. At this point, this is just a simple keto-enol totemerism in acidic conditions. Now, we know that enols are nucleophilic, and carbonyls, like our starting material, are electrophilic, and especially so since we are working in acidic conditions and some of our carbonyl is going to be protonated, that makes even stronger electrophile. So since we have a nucleophile and an electrophile in the same system, they are naturally going to react with each other, and in this case we are going to end up making a new bond between this carbon and the carbon of our carbonyl. So the alpha position of our enol is going to react with the carbon of the carbonyl of the same molecule. So this interaction, this nucleophilic attack on our carbonyl is going to give us new carbon-carbon bond over here, and we end up essentially with the protonated aldol. Now, from this point in the mechanism, we have two options. Option number one is to just deprotonate our intermediate over here and make our aldol or beta hydroxycarbonyl if you like, or Option number two will be to deprotonate the alpha position, and in that case, we are going to end up with the enol form of our aldol. If we are running this reaction at lower temperature, then we are typically going to stop at the formation of the aldol, and that is going to be our final product in this case. And then we are going to refer to this reaction as the aldol addition reaction. However, at the higher temperature, our reaction is going to continue. And of course, since all of that is in equilibrium, if you ended up drawing your aldol product, like what I have over here, you can always reprotonate that going back to the protonated version, and then from there make the enol form from that. It's not a mistake if you draw the aldol in your mechanism at all. But coming back to my mechanism here, if I have the enol form of my aldol, then one thing that can happen here, we can protonate this OH group that we have in the beta position, giving us this H2O over here, which of course you would recognize as a wonderful living group, so at this point what's going to happen, we are going to kick 
our living group out, like so, creating a double bond between our alpha and beta carbons of this molecule, making essentially our alpha-beta unsaturated compound. And the last thing that is left for us is to deprotonate our molecule and make our final product, our alpha-beta unsaturated compound. So let's run through this mechanism one more time real quick so you know what each step does and what happens on each of those steps. Step one, we protonate our carbonyl. As a result of this proton transfer, we get a protonated carbonyl, which we are going to again deprotonate, making an enol, which is our nucleophile, which going to react with the electrophile, which is the other equivalent of our carbonyl floating in our solution. As a result of this nucleophilic attack, we are going to end up with the protonated aldol, which we can either deprotonate over here, or we can deprotonate the alpha position, making either aldol, which is going to be the final product in the lower temperature conditions, or we can form our uh, enol form of the aldol, which will then be protonated by the acidic conditions that we have around, making a living group out of our OH, ultimately giving us our final product with the double bond. Now, here is a very common mistake that a lot of students make. And this common mistake shows up at the elimination step, so I'm going to draw it out separately. So, here is my aldol product. And as I've mentioned a moment ago, if we treat it with acid, with a little bit of heat, we are going to have an elimination reaction giving us a double bond. So it might be tempting to take this aldol, protonate water to make it into a leaving group, do the leaving group dissociation, forming the corresponding carbocation, and from that point pull the proton off and make a double bond. And while this might be a tempting pathway to take, this mechanistic step, or rather three steps here, are incorrect. This is wrong. Do not do that. We have plenty of experimental evidence that the way this mechanism works is via the enolization. We're first going to protonate the carbonyl, then from this point we are going to convert our protonated carbonyl into the corresponding enol. Only then, only after that point, we are going to protonate our OH group, making the following species, and only from here the enol is going to kick your leaving group out and we never see the formation of the carbocation. So we form our double bond via this long cascade of the electron density and then the last bit for us is to deprotonate our intermediate like so, giving us our final product. So remember, do not form a carbocation in this reaction. This reaction, this elimination happens via the formation of the enol first and then the enol going to kick your living group out, not the uh, carbocation, not the E1 style. So this was the aldol condensation reaction in acidic media. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next video, which is going to be the aldol condensation in basic media. And I'll see you next time.